I think we're live. Okay. It's, it's still uh, it's still churning on my side, so it's not a hundred percent certain. But uh, we'll we'll see in a minute. When looks it, when it looks pops. live on my side. Okay. I think we're All live. All right. Good. So I think the the big question for now is, are you in a car? <laughs> that's, that's a great question. That's a very good question. One that I'd love to ask my wife. But uh, <laughs> we <laughs> we took a, a trip out, and and long story short, is we got stuck out longer than we anticipated, and so uh, so here I am doing it from the car today because we weren't going to make it back home. So. Um, so okay, so it doesn't look like the car's moving. Is that right? No, it's not. Yeah, no, I'm parked. I'm parked. And my wife and son are out playing in the grass, so they're they're good to go. There's a little playground here, and you know, okay. it's a, kind of a, a deserted playground we discovered recently. So there usually aren't very many people here, which is kind of nice. But right. at any rate, so yeah, so here I am. I feel like you need to do some karaoke now. <laughs> <laughs> is that the next step? Is that what happens when you that, when you're in the? That's car? what happens when you start broadcasting Carful from karaoke. a car, right? Nope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Trust me. All right. Well, you know, decide what song you're going to be doing anyway. While I read you the first question. Okay. Oh, wait. No. 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 We decided no. last time. Oh, that that I since I asked you all the questions last time, you're going to ask me. That's right. And that doesn't prevent you from also answering but uh that's the and format I, for today and i've got glasses today so i can actually see oh. so uh yeah yeah we'll... that's that's great because i'm not wearing mine yeah, right <laughs> <laughs> so all right so question number one uh comes in from let's see uh i'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce the name is it nugan it says if getting a sapphire preferred this year anything to be aware of if i need to upgrade to a sapphire reserve next year so if you pick up the chase sapphire preferred now when and how and what do you need to be aware of in terms of upgrading to a sapphire reserve yeah no i mean for most people it's it's dead simple you just call them and ask for the upgrade and it should work you you don't get a uh, another bonus for doing it but uh uh it should be a pro it shouldn't be a problem the main thing i can think of to to worry about is your credit line that uh, you have to have a higher credit line to have the sapphire reserve than the sapphire preferred but the nice thing is where you might not have gotten approved for the Sapphire Reserve as a result of the credit line. Um, getting the upgrade is kind of easier because if you have other Chase consumer cards, you could ask them to move credit from those to your Sapphire Preferred so that you'd have a big enough credit line to get approved. And when you call, they'll tell you what credit line you need. So uh, I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, so I guess you have to wait until a year has passed though, right? Because you can't I think uh, so. Increase yeah. the annual fee before that. So that's the only thing to other thing to be aware of is just you'll have to wait a full year uh, because of something to do with the card act, right? They can't increase the annual fee on you during the first year. So, right. so you have to wait a, a year, but that's, that's about it. And then of course, you know, we, we don't know what's going to happen. There's been some news in the last couple of days. So I wouldn't be surprised to see something change in terms of, you know, bonus categories or offers or something in the Sapphire cards. So it might be worth holding off a few weeks to see what happens. You mean, you mean because it might be a shame to be locked out of it for a whole year. Right. If, if they announce something. some amazing changes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'd, I'd probably wait a couple of weeks at this so, point. So, yeah. I mean, so I would kind of guess that September 15th is, is like, say, like if we don't hear by then, well, I don't know. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. They, they can do it whatever they want. Right. So we don't, we don't, there's no hard and set date at which they might announce something that could come anytime. Right. Assuming right. I mean, they do it all. Yeah, assuming they do it all. And a lot of times, this is kind of rare that we found out about these new freedom card changes like weeks in advance. I feel like generally when there's going to be something like that, it, I mean, find out like a day or two in advance, unless it gets leaked, right. It's not usually official information two weeks before it's going to go live. So, uh, so that was kind of rare in and of itself. Good point. Good All right. point. All right. So next question comes from Casey. Uh, so Casey says, got the new Delta Platinum personal card in February, starting from zero with Delta. Today, I see an offer to earn lots of miles. Uh, uh, he has PQMs. So uh, MQMs, yeah. MQMs, yeah. And MQDs, because he must be coming from like uh, United, from United guess, World. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so MQMs and MQDs uh, with spend through the end of this year. Is it worth pursuing since... Uh, he's flying them in May, I guess. He's flying them in May of next year, it sounds like. So is it worth going after extra MQMs and all the spend to get Delta Elite status? Because, I mean, you can spend your way to status more easily now, right? 
Right, right. So if Casey got the card in February, I think that's when they were doing like lots of MQMs as part of the sign-up bonus, or was that just the reserve? Maybe that was the reserve. Mm, you know, yeah, what I'm talking I about. I yes, I do know what so, you're talking about. Yeah, so we don't know how many how know. many you're starting with here. Right. Um, so it, it's really hard to say. I, I think it comes down to how easy can you can you do the spend. And so if you can do a lot of spend really easily, um, then you know. It, it might be worth it. I, I mean, if you're just flying one flight in May, it seems unlikely. But if you think you're going to be uh, flying Delta quite a bit from then on, then then sure. I mean, th th let me put it another way. Um, I don't remember any time where it was a better time to spend on the Delta cards for uh, status from the point of view of how many MQMs you can earn because you right. can double up the that new Amex offer plus the regular status boost. So you can earn a lot more MQMs uh, for your spend than usual. So if you're, you know, if and you're they roll over, doing so it, you can earn more next year, right? That's true. Yeah. Normally MQMs only roll over if you, any that were above the amount needed for elite status, but Delta said they're all going to roll over this year. Any earned this year will roll over. So, uh, so yeah, not knowing much about your situation, go for it. There you go. All right. Next question up comes from Hilario. Hilario says, where or what are your favorite road trip locations specifically for food? Ooh, so for food, for food, what are your favorite road trip huh. locations? So, I, you know, this one, uh, I'll, I guess I'll answer a little bit, but I, I think we need to turn this around to you because I know you've done more sort of yeah, uh, I've been the U.S. food foodie type things. I think okay. Than than I have. Um, I mean, shoot, where when do I tra when do I travel specifically for food within the U.S. Not, <laughs> personally, not often. I mean, I you know <laughs> New York. If it's kind of like if I'm in the New York City area, then I'm eager to get pizza and bagels. Uh, but you know. I don't think that food is what drives my domestic uh, travel considerations. Mm. It's more like, oh, I'm going there and they're known for this. So I'll, I'll go get some of that. How about you? Uh, well, no, I, I think I, I guess I am sort of on the other end of it in terms of the fact that I, I food does motivate me to travel and visit places. Um, but when you say road trip, that makes it a little bit harder because I, I just haven't done that much road tripping the last few years. I did a lot of road tripping for a lot of years, last few years, not as much, but to give you a few of the, my favorite places, I guess I would say, sure. uh, the, the Culinary Institute of America, I've mentioned it before in posts here or there, that's in Hyde Park, New York. There's There are a couple of other campuses in the US. I have not been to the others, but the one in Hyde Park, New York is north of New York City, I don't know, hour and a half-ish maybe. Um, and it's fantastic. The French restaurant, particularly, they have a, a French restaurant and an Italian restaurant, and then an, like an American tap room, so to speak. I don't know if any of them are open right now, but when they are open, the French restaurant is fantastic. It's not cheap, but it's very reasonable for the quality of food you get. You're getting, I mean, I've, I've eaten at some very nice restaurants in the U.S., French Laundry, Alinea, 11 Madison Park, and you're getting food on that 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 kind of level or just about that level because the French place is the... Um, the senior year it's the final the final course the final semester is the french restaurant so uh so that is called the bacuse that's worth it you need to make reservations in advance though and sometimes pretty far in advance so you can do it on open table but you do have to make reservations very rare you're going to get in there last minute uh, the italian place is also pretty good but not as good so i wouldn't make the trip just for that um then so that's one spot then uh, you know a couple of those nice restaurants if you're into the fancy thing alinea is a really cool experience in chicago uh very expensive but if you're looking to blow a lot of money on a really wild and interesting immersive experience where it's like kind of like dinner theater almost that makes it sound more hokey than it is but uh then then that would be something that that is worth checking out uh charleston south carolina has some of the best restaurants charleston and portland maine i feel like are two of the cities 
that have great restaurants. Now I know Charleston's kind of known for that now, and maybe Portland, Maine is kind of known for that, but they aren't, I don't think they're two of the first places that most people come up with necessarily for foodie destinations. And they are two cities that I would say I was impressed restaurant after restaurant food was just really, really good. So cool. those are two places I would say. I to did not to. know that. You know, then, who would be uniquely qualified to answer this question? Stephen it's Pepper. Stephen Pepper. And uh, you know, he's, Normally, Kerry is behind the scenes doing, doing help, helping us out by feeding us questions, but he's actually behind the scenes. He is. Um, and, yeah. and he jumped in to, I'm going to say, support my recommendation of Charleston. He said, in Charleston, Rodney Scott's Whole Hog Barbecue. So there, there you, you go. go. I, didn't, I did not go there, but that is a place apparently Stephen Pepper gives his stamp of approval to, uh, what was it, Round Rock Donuts, Stephen, I think, that I've seen the pictures of the donuts. That so looks pretty neat. That's outside of Austin. Um, Skyline and, Chili, I think, and where's that Cincinnati? Cincinnati, area? yeah, that's a Cincinnati thing. Although there's a bunch of different places that have that style of chili in Cincinnati, and I, as I recall, I think Stephen said that there might have been a different one that he liked a little bit better, and I think it was actually no. Like, he maybe, says Skyline no, is best Skyline was it? Ball. Okay, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> take it back. There you go. All right, so there you got some ideas anyway, some things, and and you know, there's a lots lots of different local food stuff all over the place. So I like to eat, so I'm always interested in checking out something local and interesting and you know and I'm, i'll go anywhere from like fine gourmet to like the little dive hole in the wall kind of a place i just like to try something good so so that's that uh the next question up let's see harsh says uh, i have been out of the game for a month what did i miss other than the new flex card uh, so i've been <laughs> out of the game for a month that's you know that's the type of question we ought to be able to answer what does he miss craig yeah well i mean it's hard. It's hard to think back, you know, <laughs> yeah, what, what was happening a month ago, especially when we've been bombarded with things just in the last two days. Right. So it wasn't just the flex card. I'd say, arguably, a m much bigger news, even though that's really big news, is is uh, all the domestic airlines, save JetBlue, having announced uh, no change fees and and some other, uh, at least for domestic travel. But then Alaska said no change fees worldwide, right. including award change fees that just right. came out today. Um, that to me, in, in many ways, just kind of changes a lot of things that uh, about our, our game, right? Um, you know, the, um, <laughs> so the difficulty in applying those airline fee credits um, now you still have to be a little creative, but it, it's uh, it's going to be much easier than than ever before to uh, to make use of those, right? Right, right. Um, awards, uh, you know, especially like with Alaska, and if anyone follow, if the others start following suit with with no change fees worldwide, I mean, uh, United did it uh, up to thirty days. I think you could cancel. Um, so that's that's really great. Not as good as Alaska's, but um, you know that means that with any of these airlines that do that, you can book any award as long as you have the miles. Uh, if it interests you, you know, when, when we see these blog posts about, oh, there's great award space on this or that, you could just book it. And, and uh, even if you don't know if you're gonna go, and right. I think that's, that's a huge, huge benefit and um, arguably makes these miles more valuable, more, more valuable in, in a way different from calculating the cents per mile. That, right that we often do. Um, so, you know, I'm stuck with boatload of United miles because of my trips being canceled for the summer. And now, and I was really regretting it because there's so many other good ways to, to book Star Alliance. But, um, but now it's like, okay, well, th that gives me a lot of freedom now that I, sure. yes, I'll have to pay a little bit more for United mm -hmm. Awards than some other options, but the, the friendliness of that is is huge to me. Absolutely huge. And, and a terrible week for Southwest Airlines, huh? I mean, like, <laughs> what a horror. Because that, that, that was their competitive advantage in a lot of ways, right? The fact that right. Uh, things were so incredibly flexible. You could always change down to like 10 minutes before the flight. I mean, that stood out among airlines. And now that is suddenly the norm. So that makes Southwest, you know, arguably much less valuable than it than it was. That's uh, a good so, point. So, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, and also with JetBlue, I'm interested to see what's going to happen. A reader brought up, and, and they're totally right, is JetBlue going to 
devalue mosaic status by getting rid of change fees because that's uh, basically the the value in having mosaic status right i that's mean that's right uh, so I, yes i mean i think they're gonna have to add some other perk to it yeah. I mean, because we're presuming that they will follow suit because it'd be hard how not they, to, how right? they could stay competitive without doing it is beyond me yeah, well, and their change fees are pretty ridiculous, you know, comparatively, you know, their change right? fees. Yeah, when I, I did that, um, I did a post recently on award ticket change and cancellation fees, and the JetBlue fees are based on the cash price of the ticket, even when you're booking an award, and they're super ridiculous. Like a ticket that's between $150 and $200 has a $150 change fee, if I remember correctly. So. Yeah. Like, you know, you're losing almost all of the value mm -hmm. unless you're at the and even at the top end, you're, you know, you're only retaining $50 of the value uh, after you've paid the change fee. So, um, so yeah, it, it, it's going to be a big change for them and a, definitely something that's less, you know, less interesting anyway about mosaic status in the meantime. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's interesting. It's neat. I think one of the things that I've always enjoyed about this game is finding ways to be able to be flexible. And there's so many different foreign partner programs that offer flexibility. Uh, but I think that now for the masses, this just makes the, the US-based programs wildly better than they were a week ago. So uh, it does. average person, so that's huge. All right, All right. so that, that answers that. So question number five <laughs> comes from Victoria. Victoria, I'm planning, a tra I'm planning on traveling soon and want to make sure I have trip delay and travel protections. I'm debating between upgrading my Chase Sapphire Preferred to the Chase Sapphire Reserve or upgrading my Marriott Bold Card to the Ritz. Which should she do and why? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, geez, that's a great question. If, if, you, uh, if you have a lot of ultimate rewards points and you'd like to cash them out um, by using them to pay for travel, or by um, using that, uh, that new feature that lets you erase uh, right now grocery charges, but it'll, it'll change quarterly what, those, what kind of charges can be erased at 1.5 cents each. Uh, then I think there's a strong arg argument for the uh, Sapphire Reserve for you. Um, if however, your, your goal with Ultimate Rewards points is to use them to transfer to partners and get value that way, um, I think it'd be hard to make the argument for Sapphire Reserve. For the Ritz, um, I love that card, and, but the, uh, the value depends on a couple things. One, that you value the ability to have priority pass with unlimited guests, not only for yourself, but for anyone that you add as an authorized user to the Ritz card, which you can add authorized users for free. So you can basically give a lot of people priority pass, at no extra cost. Uh, I think you also need to value the 50K per year um, cert uh, that you get, uh, free night certificate, at, at least to some amount. And you need to plan on using the $300 airline travel credits to make this card. Like if all three of those are true, where you value all three of those things, then this card's a no brainer. And I would say, even if you decide to go to the Sapphire Reserve, you might want to consider doing the, no, the Marriott uh, yeah. to, to the Ritz as well. I, I'm going to interject and say definitely the bold to the Ritz. It's like there's not even a question. And, and the reason why is because you said you're traveling soon and you want to have trip delays. So that means that you're looking at, at this for near term trips. And this year, between July 1st and December 31st with the Ritz card, you can use the $300 in travel credits on restaurant and grocery purchases. So that's $300 is basically cash right there, right? So if you value that over, that that free night certificate anywhere, you know, like a, a, at any any reasonable amount, which I mean, you can't possibly value it less than 150 bucks unless you're not planning to use it, right? So I mean, it's worth up to 50,000 for a night up to 50,000 points. And often those nights will be quite a bit more expensive than that. Um, so then it's the card's basically a wash and you're getting that priority pass and you're getting the, the trip protection. So I definitely think you should upgrade that. And the Sapphire Reserve, you should upgrade if you're going to use the one and a half cents each. And if you're not, yeah, then there's just no reason. All right, that's that sounds good to me. Okay, uh, so the, I'm going to oh, interject okay. a, a little story okay. uh, about the, it's sort of an unbaked story about the Ritz card. So I, I uh, had put the Ritz back in my wallet thanks to uh, both the restaurant 10X thing going on, restaurant and gas 10X deal going mm -hmm. on, plus the ability to erase uh, restaurant charges. Uh, what a great combo, right? So once right. I was sure I had over $300, I shot them a secure message saying, can you 
you know, apply my airline fee credits. I've always done that in the past through secure message, no problem for airline charges. Um, right. But I get a message back saying, uh, we can't me. help you through secure message. Give us a call. And I haven't had a chance. I haven't gotten around to doing calling yet, but that's weird. Yeah, it is kind of odd. You know, actually, that's odd also because several readers reported right in those first couple of days when I said that, yeah, it was confirmed that they had done it via secure message right, and gotten reimbursed. Right. So I know that some people did. Maybe they stopped doing that. They emailed, they sent out an email today. I don't know if you saw, they sent out no, an I email didn't. today finally announcing it and letting oh. cardholders know. And, and the email said, to call in, in oh. to do it. So, so maybe they do have a new role. Maybe they, yeah, maybe they created a new role. So, mm -hmm. I, although I, that said, I'm sure that probably the marketing information never said take care of your airline fee credits by secure message. It probably always That's said true. to call in. So That's I don't know true. That's, That's true. Really Plus, it. this is the weirdest time ever to to mandate calling versus it does seem secure weird, messaging. You'd think yeah. they'd want to uh, avoid yeah. over taxing the phone lines. So you would think so. You would I don't think get so. that. I might have yeah. just gotten a bad rep who had yeah. answered the secure message, which is the most likely explanation. I that think. is, that is, that is. All right, so there you go, Victoria. Hopefully that helps. Daniel asks us next, seems like the new PayPal key product has some fun MS potential. What are your thoughts on this product? Any fun uses you want to discuss? I saw this PayPal key thing, and I can tell from the look on Greg's face that he didn't look into it very far either, probably, right? <laughs> it, took me, it took me a while to, to remember what this is. So it, it's only available to people who have been targeted so far, I believe. I, I know I jumped onto my PayPal account to see if it was available when I read about it, and it, I didn't see any option to get it. Um, but if I remember right, what it does is it uh, it's a MasterCard that will... I guess be, behind the scenes charge whatever credit card of yours. So it's like a credit card that oh, PayPal right. credit card that will then in turn charge your yeah, Amex right. or your Visa card or a other MasterCard. But I don't see any point in that. But um, so you know, the, the so the nice thing obviously is is any place where that doesn't normally take uh, Amex or Visa, which is less likely. Uh, you could theoretically use this and still run up charges on your Amex, for example. So, um, so what will happen, for example, just to, to stretch the boundaries here, and I don't know the answer here, uh, what will happen if you use this PayPal thing to buy gift cards at Simon Mall and you have it charged to your Amex uh, Blue Business Plus, which normally earns 2x, but doesn't earn anything at Simon Mall. Will will you get the two X because it'll maybe look like the charge is coming from PayPal instead of from from uh, Simon? Uh, or if they pass along who the vendor is, the other question is if they do pass along who the vendor is, will that have any change on category bonuses? Like so, I mean it could be negative, right? Like so if you right, right. if you eat at a restaurant that only takes Visa and Mastercard and you use your gold card behind the scenes thinking you'll get 4X, you might not, right. I don't know. Um, so anyway, so those are the kind of thoughts I had. I, I mean, I think it's also a debit card, but I don't know whether, it seems unlikely to me it would debit against your credit card. So I don't think that would work. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what the curve card out of the UK did, right? But uh, but I, I, I doubt that, uh... I doubt that too. If if that is the case, then it's not going to last for very long. Is, <laughs> right. is my thought. So, uh, but but the other thing is that I think the PayPal key though isn't it an online number. I, mean, I don't think you could use it. Well, you guess you could use it online, Simon, rather than uh, person, is it so. only online? I thought okay, maybe it is. Maybe I, I'm I thought wrong. it was. I thought it was I thought a virtual it. number. Yeah, um, it could be. So, it could be. Yeah. So <laughs> at any rate, uh, there's two people uh, talking about something we know. Right. We don't know nothing about. Right. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe. Maybe. I, you know, I. I would say though that I think that very unlikely that the MS plays like Simon are going to work because it's going to say PayPal Simon gift cards, right? And and so maybe it'll work for a little bit, but for a little bit, yeah, is going to catch on to that. So best of luck if you try that out. But I. I, I wouldn't probably bother. Um, all right, so Larry then asks us, any thoughts on velocity limits for Chase? So he's got X3, X6, et cetera. Uh, go for Freedom Unlimited now or wait until the Flex. Flex thinks Chase will have spending caps that they haven't mentioned yet. So I'm not sure what the X3, X6, et cetera is, but I'm assuming that he's like talking about 
524 status in some way that I'm not quite understanding. Um, oh, oh, I see. Well, I don't know what the six is, but maybe he's asking about velocity limits for the three X on. on so the new the new Freedom Flex card, right? Like right, right. I mean, we're certainly worried about what you know. It's it's super easy to go to the drugstore and buy gift cards, right? That's right. should be obvious to most of us. Um, and so it seems like a super easy play for those who can liquidate them to uh, you know to visit the to <laughs> the drugstore often. Um, but the fear is that they'll shut us down, right? And right. Um, what are the velocity limits? I mean, it, I have no idea. It, so yeah. uh, it, it it kind of actually bothers me. I mean, maybe maybe he's right. Maybe maybe there are limits that we just haven't seen in any of the marketing materials yet. But but I like how the in cash, for example, says you get five x on up to twenty five thousand dollars spend. So we kind of know where their sensitivity limit is. Um, you know, they're just not going to allow us to abuse it. Uh, if they're going to allow this to be abused, then then it's like the honeypot thing where it, it feels like they're kind of trapping us into getting <laughs> shut down um, because it's it's so attractive uh, to do it. But I um, don't know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, are you going to try it? I mean, which yeah. are I mean, so you know, so so you're saying if there's no limits, let's say there's no stated 3X. limit on the three X, because I mean, right. I, I would kind of think since Chase released information officially that they probably would have set the caps if they intend to have them. I mean, we don't know that for sure, but I think they probably. So I'm I'm thinking that they're not gonna have a public cap, which means there's a cap. We just don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know. What do you? I mean, will you use it at all? Will you use it just a little bit? I mean, one card a week. Yeah. Two cards. Ten I mean, cards. like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could totally imagine, you know, about once a week dropping in and just getting a, a single 500. And yeah. Like once a week, that adds up. Um, right. So, I mean, that's 6,000 points a month. So you're talking, you know, what, 10 to 72,000 points a year that way. I mean, that's. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think I'd feel fairly safe doing that. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much further I'd feel safe doing. That, I mean, that, that's not that, that's fairly reasonable, right? Because if, if you so if you did one five hundred dollar card a week, four weeks a month, that's two thousand a month, twenty four thousand a year. That's right around the cap for the chasing cash, right? In terms of the amount that you can do per year and, and a no fee card in their five x category. So I would think that that's probably going to be safe at the three X category, but I don't know. I think, I think I, I'm excited about this, but I think I'm probably going to wait and let other people get shut down first. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> so, probably going to go very slow. Maybe I'll, yeah. uh, you know, a week or two in, maybe I'll get a card if I haven't heard any shutdown stories yet. And then, uh, you know, give it another week or two and see if I've heard any shutdown stories a month in. And if I haven't heard any shutdown stories a month in, then I feel like, okay, I can probably buy a couple if I want. And, you know, but I, I'm not going to go crazy on that because I do like my other chase cards. So I'd be happy to pick up some points at 3X, but I don't want to ruin the chances that I have with other cards. So Right. Yeah, exactly. So there you go. All, All right. right. Any thoughts, uh, WRT? Regarding, with respect to. With respect to. There you go. I'll look at you and your acronyms here. Any thoughts with respect to strategy with a possible sunset for the legacy Hyatt? I am about nine months away from being under 524 with the legacy card, earned the bonus in 2017. Would you close now to open a new World of Hyatt card in the summertime of next year? That would be. Is there a reason to close it now? So, so no, I, I don't think I would do that because I, I think I would use my spot to pick up other things. Um, so, uh, you know, when, so the United card, if you don't already have that, or you don't have the free version, you know, get that while the bonus is really high. Um, well, he's nine months away from being under 524. So he's not nine months, eligible yeah. yet. Right, right, right. He's like not going to be eligible until next summer. So we don't know what the other offers will be then. Right. I still wouldn't. I, I don't know. Cause like, so, I mean, it depends how much you want that, the new, World of Hyatt card because there's always a chance you're not going to get approved. Whereas if you just wait on it, it'll get 
theoretically get transformed to the world of high card. Um, is there, I mean, is there, personally, there, I think is I would, there a problem if your card gets sunset and transition to the world of high? I mean, you could always close that six months. No, I think, right? I, oh, I think, oh, I see where you're saying. Well, I think, I think he's just saying that he's giving up the chance to get the sign up bonus on the world of Hyatt card once he goes under um, 524. Right. Um, but you're right. There's not like a lifetime rule. So he could later on cancel the world of Hyatt card and sign up new. Yeah, yeah, and it's, uh, yeah. It's not like Amex, you know, or you know, the twenty-four month rule with Chase is that you can't have earned the welcome bonus in the past twenty-four months. So, I mean, theoretically, you could cancel your legacy Hyatt card and maybe apply for the new wo- World of Hyatt card like the next day or a few days later or a week later. Mm-hmm. I always say to wait la- at least a wait week. a week. Yeah. Um. But but you know, relatively soon thereafter. So I don't see any reason right. to get rid of it. So I think we're agreed. Right? Yeah. Okay. Let's keep it. Keep it for now. Yeah. Keep it for now and see what happens. All right. Steven says with the changes in the chase freedom cards, do you foresee changes coming to the Sapphire cards? I put out my opinions on that today. What are your opinions? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think um, it's a, I think it's a no brainer that they'll offer at least five X through, through the trap for travel book through chase. Um that's kind of boring, like, like, duh answer. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I do think we'll see some other things, especially to Sapphire preferred that card has been sitting on <laughs> resting on its laurels for too many years for huh? way too long. And it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't have a, a whole lot, uh, exciting going on. And so, um, it'll be interesting. It, it'll be interesting to see, will they, uh, I could see why they'd be hesitant to do 3x dining because then that'll start eating into the Sapphire Reserve uh, reason for being. Um, I mean, they've already eaten into that though because they're going to give 3x dining on the Freedom Unlimited and the Freedom Flex. So they they, they have. Although I I kind of see that as like they've solved the the spouse problem with the <laughs> Sapphire Reserve. So the one one thing that always annoyed me about Sapphire Reserve is that you know, if you want a second card, you want to authorize user card, you got to pay extra for that. And um, the main reason I would want one, like travel, I can usually, we could usually put on the one card, but dining out, sometimes we're dining out separately. And if if you don't have other better dining options uh, than the 3X, then you'd want, back when, you would want another Sapphire Reserve for that purpose. But now you could use the free card and get the three X for dining. And so everyone can have their own three X dining card and you could share one three um, X uh, travel card. Anyway, that's my view. Uh, <laughs> so, so what do you think they'll do then to enhance the Sapphire preferred and or reserve? Yeah. Or do you think I mean, I, somebody mentioned today and I've heard this speculation. Do you think that they'll launch like a mid tier Sapphire card? I thought like that a, was Amex a gold competitor. Yeah. I thought that was a really interesting um, uh, kind of guess. I mean, I certainly uh, thought, like earlier, I would have thought that was likely, but I'm so surprised by the news about the flex card and and them adding these three X categories that um, that where do you, I, where do you go with a two hundred and fifty dollar card? Yeah, I I, I don't know. Um, well, it's also just like I'm, I I can't figure out what Chase what Chase's strategy is, so. It's hard for me to predict they're going to do this or that or the other because I haven't come up with yet like a theory behind what they're doing other than like, you know, it's sort of um, it almost feels random. Like, let's throw in these things that will attract customers and and maybe they don't have a overarching ultimate rewards team that's making these decisions as much as the freedom right. team made these, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't it's know. It's hard to say. It is weird. You know, so it's interesting because you said you felt like the Sapphire preferred is the one that, you know, like it it, it doesn't really, it, it's lost its relevance. And and to some extent, I agree. I said today in today's post that rather than the Sapphire Reserve, I would probably go with the Inc. Business Preferred because it maintains the 3X on all travel uh, yeah. and the ability to transfer to partners. So if you're going to pay 95 bucks a year, that's probably the one I would pay for. But for people who aren't going to think that they ha- they, they're they eligible for a business card, uh, that are going to stick with a personal card, I would think that a card that has a $95 annual fee has a lot more mass appeal than a card with a 
$550 annual fee. So, uh, so I would think that, you know, the odd thing is that, that it doesn't earn as well, obviously in terms of dining, but it adds the transfer partners. So I don't necessarily think that it's a lost card, but I, I won't be surprised to see them add something. I think it, it just doesn't have any shine to it anymore. Yeah. There's nothing where you could look at it and say, that's wow, right. that's special. Like there's nothing. Which it was the, it was the card for years. It was. Right? It no, was. I mean, anybody would have told you that's the card to start with. Yeah. And, I uh, mean, it, it, it was so amazing when it came out that you could get two X for some things instead of just one X because back then the gold standard was airline cards where you get one X for everything except for the airline where you get two X. Like that was it. That's but it. here was a chance to get two X for a lot of airlines and hotels because of the transfer partners. And uh, in, in, in many more uh, spending opportunities than the credit, than the airline cards offered. Right. And um, it, it also back then also offered a 7% annual dividend. So it, it was kind of earning 1.07 yeah. for most spend and 2.14 for the rest, but that uh, that got taken away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe they'll add another dividend, or they're going to have to do something. So they we'll will. see what that what that is. I think. All right. Will. Yeah, I think so. It's got to be coming. What about on the business side? Before I read the next question, what about on the business side? Do you think that they're, I mean, they kind of been evening cards out for a long time. Do you see them doing anything like the flex on the business side or a rotating category card at all? Um, I, so yeah, I've been thinking about that, that up until now, when, when people, you know, when, when I've been recommending a one and a half everywhere ultimate rewards card, I've generally been steering people towards the unlimited. I mean, the ink unlimited, not the freedom unlimited, um, because it doesn't add to your 524 count and, uh, spend high spend doesn't hurt your credit score. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> not anymore, probably, right? Not anymore, yeah. not with current situation. Now, now, now the Freedom Unlimited has a, has a big advantage. So um, will the ink card do anything? So my guess is no, and I'll tell you why not, um, because they're not looking for more customers right now <laughs> right. for the ink card. So <laughs> right. yeah, if we see anything happen, I, I, think, I think it'll be quite a while. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. All right, so let's see. Distrum asks us, is there any reason someone well below 524 couldn't get both the Freedom and Freedom Unlimited and have a total of 24,000 bonus grocery spend over the next 12 months and two sign-up bonuses? What do you think? Uh, yeah, no, there's no reason. You can you can do that. Yeah. Go yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> well, but... but Rather than the well, so here's a, here's a question, and this was something I mm -hmm. kind of touched on briefly this in this mm -hmm. morning's post. Would you get the freedom, or would you wait for the freedom flex? Would you get the freedom because there's a chance that they're going to get rid of the freedom at some point, so maybe it's like a, you know, not exactly a last chance to get a sign up bonus because I feel like it's going to be around for a while probably, but right. at some point it's probably going to go away. I think so. Mm -hmm. Would you get the freedom, even though it doesn't have the awesome category? Because you're gonna get the freedom unlimited, so it's gonna have most of the benefits of the flex anyway. Right, right. What would you do there? Yeah. Um, and and you're assuming they don't value those Mastercard benefits. That the... assuming assuming you don't value the Mastercard benefits, like the cell phone protection and the shop runner shipping. I mean, they're things that are nice, but you probably have other cards that have those too. So. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, so I, I think it, it sort of doesn't matter much because, so you get the freedom now, I, like the advantage of doing that would be like, if there's some advantage in the future to having that visa freedom card that, that um, is no longer available, right? Um, and I, I just think it's pretty unlikely that we're, you're going to be seeing things like happen where it's like, I mean, <sighs> where there's much going on anyway, maybe there'll be like a little bit here, but anyway, my point is uh, it's not worth spending much time for to figure it out. <laughs> it's not going to matter much in the long run. Do you think they're going to have the same rotating categories or different? I think they'll be the same. Yeah. That's what I think too. So yeah, I, I'm most likely anyway, that, that would be an advantage to getting a, a freedom uh, now if, if, if you different. think they'll be different. Yeah. Right, right. But I suppose we'll probably know before the opportunity to get the Freedom Card is gone. So uh, so we'll, we'll, we should find out soon anyway what those rotating categories are on the 
the Freedom Flex. All right, so Yolanda asks us, I don't have any Freedom cards at all. Which one should I start with? The Unlimited or the new Flex? I do have a Sapphire Reserve and an old ink cash currently at 424. So she oh. is right on that <laughs> right, edge. Right there. And, and, and normally I'd say pick up some more uh, ink cards before going over the edge there, but, uh, but no, uh, not, right not, not right now. Um, and of course, Greg's saying that if you have, if you've been out of the game for a month, like somebody said, because Chase is just not approving very many people for the ink cards right now. It's super right. tough to get an ink card today. That's not always the case, but it sure is now. Right, right. So uh, I'm going to assume that Yolanda has some card that offers good everywhere else. So let me put it another way. If Yolanda has a good everywhere else card, like a double cash or, or a blue business plus something like that, then then I, I'd say that you know there's an argument for for uh, doing the flex and getting the uh, and getting that one. Uh, but if you don't, I don't know. I think I'd go for the uh, for, uh, Freedom Unlimited. Oh yeah, because it gives you the one and a half X everywhere. Right. I don't know. I, yeah. I mean that's not that's not a bad strategy. It's a fairly sound strategy. On the flip side, I, I mentioned in the post that I wrote today that I mean, and this is always true if you've got an in cash, but you could go buy Visa gift cards with your card that earns three or five X and use those for your unbonus spend. I don't do that because that's too much of a hassle, but some people do. And, and you'd end up with more than one and a half X that way. So, I mean, you could come out ahead of, of the freedom unlimited if you're going to be super organized and if that's not super inconvenient. So, right. So that's, that's only, a, so you could do that with freedom unlimited too. So the only advantage to your plan is you get that, Fifteen hundred dollars a quarter of five x, right. right. um, so it, it's just not really big numbers. And then, so I think I'd rather have the convenience of getting one point five on all on bonus spend um, than have to juggle the gift cards in order to get good everywhere else spend. That's fair. And and then uh, try to maximize those five x categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can be that can be annoying to the trying to maximize them, especially in quarters where they don't match up with whatever your normal spend is. Right, right. Yep. All right, Victor says, would the $300 grocery restaurant credit apply? And I assume we're talking about uh, with the Ritz card. If I, up, yep, if I upgraded my Bonvoy to the Ritz now, I renewed my Bonvoy two months ago. So would I then pay the Ritz annual fee in the first billing cycle? So two questions there really. How does the annual fee work when you upgrade in the middle of the year somewhere and would you be eligible for the restaurant and yeah. for use of the? I'm not the sure about the answer to either one. I like. I think that the answer is yes about the grocery restaurant. It's not grocery. Uh, restaurant yeah. gas, isn't it? No, it's it's grocery. Three hundred. Oh, three hundred dollar. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. The three hundred dollar. Yeah, I was so thinking about, about the ten x um, yep. uh, offer. Right. Um, oh, that that I'm pretty sure you would be qualified for. I, I think the, the I would three dollar travel. I mean, I don't know why they would only make that for people who already had it yeah. it's more yeah. the the 10x offer that's going on right now at the same time i don't know if they would make that retroactively available um the yeah i'm <laughs> i don't know i don't know whether they uh, prorate or uh or refund what's left of your annual fee and charge you new yeah i don't remember but but either way you're gonna end up not you're not gonna pay 495 more than what you've paid, right? I mean, they're either going to prorate it and you're going to pay right. the, a full 495 altogether, or I, one way or another, you're going to pay for it, or, or they'll refund the the fee that you paid and, right. and charge the, you 490. The main difference it has to do with is is when your uh, when your annual certificate comes and yeah. whether whether it resets that or or not. And and I don't and I remember. Yeah, I can't recall that either. So if you renewed it two months ago, though, the nice thing is you probably just got a certificate. So you, so you, even if it does reset it, it's going to reset it by two months. You're not really. So what Greg is saying is it's possible that when you upgrade to the Ritz now that you won't get your next free night certificate until September of next year, rather than getting it, whatever what was correct, two, July, July of next year. So you may have to wait a couple more months to get your next 50K cert. Neither of us can remember off the top of our heads whether that's the case or they keep right. your original. So I remember some people reporting that uh, 
they ended up getting sort of double certs when they upgraded, but it probably had to do with the timing. Like maybe they upgraded yeah. right at the, at the uh, there, yeah. We were, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't bank on that. <laughs> no, nor would I, nor would I. So, all right, there you go. Then let's see, is it uh, Trey asks us next uh, or Trey dial says received bank bonus offer in the mail, my name or current resident fine print valid for recipients of mailed offer and is not transferable would my spouse be eligible so it was it was addressed to his name let's say his uh, i don't know his or her but let's say trey is a him so addressed to him or the current resident so could he give that to the spouse i don't see why not as long as spouse is in the same household i mean i think if they're checking that at all they're only checking for the uh address the, the address and uh they might only be check, checking zip code even or something like that yeah if yeah. they're checking again if they're checking it all and just depends on i mean if it's uh, anything other than american Senate. airlines if it's anything other than american airlines <laughs> then i would say that if it's, if it's an american <laughs> airlines offer, i i mean you're you're playing with fire and be cautious it. yeah <laughs> yeah so if it's anything other than american airlines then yeah i would say current resident is a current resident and right. i say that of course for those not aware because american airlines has done a lot of shutdowns this year for people that they feel like abused mailer offers that were intended for other people so i would just avoid AA mailer offers right now because it seems like their people have a lot of time on their hands to go after folks and shut them down so it kind of seem itchy to justify that you know they're going after people or something so so just as a random aside if a if a envelope comes and it says urgent open immediately and it's addressed to current resident it's not, <laughs> not, not that urgent, urgent. <laughs> not that urgent probably <laughs> good chance it's not might urgently. be urgent for their business so that they get more money but <laughs> urgently needs to go in the circular file um, <laughs> right. now some just some guy named greg asks us the next question here i think just some nice guy name. named greg yeah nice name asks that based on your experience there would you recommend paying for the vista hot tub suite at the ventana big sur at full points price of sixty thousand per night no status or access to guest of hyatt just have points so would you recommend paying for the premium suite at Ventana at sixty thousand. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, so I haven't stayed in the standard suite that you could book for. I think something like forty-eight thousand, right? forty-eight thousand, forty-eight thousand. Yep. Um, it looks awfully nice in the pictures. Is it as nice as? I mean, it's probably not as nice as the sixty thousand one that I did stay in. But um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, boy, it's hard to say. I mean, I. Um, I, you know, I booked, I happily booked the Big Sur suite, the 48K one, uh, knowing that my status gave me a, a good chance of getting to the other one, but but also feeling comfortable knowing that I, I'm pretty sure I'll love the Big Sur suite as well. Um, so I guess it just depends how much you value those extra 12,000 points, whether uh whether whether so I I don't know how to judge it I don't again because I haven't I haven't been in the the lesser one, um, if uh, if you have so many points you don't know what to do with then go for it why not I'll tell you why not because you can cash them out for nine hundred dollars right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean you know, so it's, uh, just some guy named Greg is is a so, bajillionaire uh, might be a bajillionaire so nine hundred dollars on you know, so it might, it might not be a big deal. So. Might not mean anything. That's right. Well, it, and if that's the case, <laughs> then I'd say, why are you asking? Just some guy named Craig. Go ahead and you do it. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. But if, I, but I'm thinking that if you if you're asking, then I, I that's my opinion. My opinion is decide whether that's worth nine hundred dollars a night to you or not. You know, and, and the suite looks very nice. Greg really enjoyed it. He obviously was willing to go back, so he obviously feels like the place is worth it at least at forty eight thousand points a night, since that's what he originally booked it at. Uh, so that tells you something from a guy who's been around a lot that it was worth that much to him. Uh, is it worth that much to you? I mean, it, versus cashing out the money and, and doing something else with it or booking a standard room and seeing if you can get a, a some sort of a work out a paid upgrade to if, if there were a standard room available which is probably not the case but yeah that's, that's the hard thing to do yeah yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, so then quick fire round. Let's see. Cyprian asks us, uh, hey, Sip, been a while. Um, says $1,800 in Alaska wallet from a canceled trip. My wallet money has an expiration. Is booking a year out flight a way to extend the expiration by using the money and then changing that flight next year? What do you think? No idea. Do you know? No, I don't know. 
I, I don't think that it typically works that way. I, th I think that, well, you know, th that's a really good question because I don't know what Alaska's current situation is in terms of when the credits expire. So you, uh, you said that, um, you said it has an expiration, but I don't know when the expiration is. So I would think that if it was recently canceled, like COVID canceled trip, most of the airlines are giving you a credit that's valid for two years already. Uh, so you've got a while now with Alaska eliminating change fees, and you should at least theoretically be able to book it and change on the road, right? Could you, could you book as far out as you're able to with those credits, regardless of when they expire? Book like past when they, well, or do you have to book within the expiration? Let's say you book it uh, within the expiration, toward the end of the expiration date, but before it expires. And then as that flight gets closer, you, you change it to further out. Are you allowed to do it? I'm guessing that's going to be an airline by airline thing about whether they yeah. uh, whether they prevent that or not, and I don't know. I, yeah, no, I don't. I don't know. Um, move on. This is lightning round. It is, but there was something I just popped into my head with that with the change. Oh, oh, oh. So here's the other thing though on that quickly that I did not look at the announcement. I saw that Alaska is waiving the change fees. I did not read the articles about it yet. So or the announcement. Do you know, Greg? Are you going to get the residual value of the voucher if you book something cheaper? I don't. I was kind of more excited about the uh, right the word change. award word uh, changes. Yeah, because that's so much more applicable with Alaska, since if you're going to be flying internationally, it's most likely not on Alaska. <laughs> right, right, right. The reason yeah, I bring that up Canada, is, I guess. is because like United, if you booked your eighteen hundred dollars and then you end up changing it to a flight that's only five hundred dollars, you're not going to get anything back. Americans going to let you keep the right. other thirteen hundred dollars in value. I'm not sure what Alaska is doing. So. Right. And I don't think I know what Delta does it on that. Either. Delta I think didn't they announce. Give you, yeah, I think they I mean, usually they give you the residual. So I would think they would do that. Or at least I think they do. Anyway. All right. All right we're not quick firing. You're right. Any hints that a, a, a better Hyatt bonus is coming soon what do you think uh better hyatt bonus what is it oh like a credit card bonus do you think that's what that's uh, you know about? that was initially what um, i thought but then i was like oh are they talking a, a promo for the hotels i don't know um yeah I, let's go credit card let's think they credit might. card um i yes i mean i i i would i would give it like a 40% chance. Like it's oh, yeah. been pretty stable at 50 K, but at the same time they are, uh, they are wanting customers. So eh, hmm. it, it might happen. There you go. I don't have an opinion on that. I'm bad kind of ambivalent. I don't know whether it's going to happen or not. Um, let's see. Oh, Stephen was saying the referral offer for the Hyatt uh, card expired on August 31st. So maybe there's something coming, but he might be misremembering that. So he, oh, he thought the referral offer ended on the 31st. And uh, Chase is still showing the same 25 and 25. For right now. So, so it's still yeah. the 50K. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So Kim asks then, uh, which card has the best highest rate for grocery store spend? The best highest, not the best highest. worst highest. Okay. No, not the worst highest. Definitely the best, <laughs> most highestest. Um, um, which card has the best? Well, I mean, uh, I think the gold card has the best standard uh, earning if you, depending on how much you value membership rewards at with their four X, um, you know, lots of times lately we've been seeing grocery bonuses that are not standard. So, um, blue cash preferred gives you 6% on up to 6,000 a year. So, I mean, that's, yeah. value. I mean, I, I know I don't get excited about it either because it's a capped at 6,000, but if you're a single person and you spend 6,000 or less a year, then it's 360 bucks against a $95 annual fee. It's, I mean, you know, not super exciting, but uh, not terrible if you don't really value membership rewards points anyway. So right. that'd be your next best. Yeah. And then there's things like the freedom has rotating categories and sometimes it's grocery stores if you don't want to spend the 250 bucks for the uh, the um, Amex Gold, then $95 for the City Premier gets you 3X grocery store. And it's one of those things yeah. that it really depends on how much spend you're going to do. So uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, where can I find some good MS methods? Manufactured spending is what he means by MS. Where can he find good methods to manufacture spend? Right. So, you know, we, we have a general overview that if you, you know, look on our site for the MS guide, uh, that'll give you an overview of what types of uh, techniques are out there. 
um, doesn't necessarily get into the detail that you need. Um, so I always think the best way is to try to find people in your area, your geographical area, who are into the hobby and make friends with them and get to know what they do. Um, because the details of how to MS effectively vary greatly from place to place. Yep. So how do you find people in your area that are doing it? You look for meetup groups. Uh, Flyer Talk has like uh, community sections where you might be able to find sort of meetups through there. Yep. I don't know. That's what comes to mind. Yep. Frequent Miler Insiders might find people in the Facebook group that are from your area. Maybe find you just do a little search and see if anybody in your area has posted something, a you know, question about stores in your area, that kind of thing might help. Uh, so there you go. Good, mm -hmm. good, good answer there. Approximately, Mark asks, approximately how much gift card float would you typically have at Amazon, Target? Obviously depends on how easy you liquidate it, but curious where your limits are for how much to load. Uh, so talking merchant gift card, like how much would you load in merchant gift cards to your Amazon account or Target account? Would you be worried mm -hmm. about? So if you're getting them, at, if you're getting the gift cards at like 10% off or something, or something like that, or, yeah. yep. um, I, you know, gosh, I mean, that's so dependent on your own personal like spend habits and everything. So I do that uh, not to MS, but, you know, to sort of pre-buy purchases at Target or Amazon. And so I think, I think I've at most done like 1500 with Amazon and maybe range of 800 or so with Target. Um, but that's just sort of, that's been the amount I've been comfortable with and saying, I know I'm going to spend that down. I think with Amazon, I would actually go higher. At least these days, I know I'm spending a lot with Amazon right. more than usual. Right. So these days, I'd probably go higher. But um, yeah. I spend a lot with Amazon, but still, I probably haven't ever loaded more than, like you said, 1,500-ish maybe at a time. Just I, It's not that I'm afraid or concerned about loading more. I just haven't, I don't usually have a need to load much more than that all at once. So. Right. Uh, and Target, I, I would like never shop at Target. So once once a year, maybe. So I, I don't bother there. In terms of gift cards, like Visa gift cards and that sort of thing. I mean, that's a very different question uh, in terms of what you float there. I didn't ask that, but uh, you know, at times I've floated more than I probably should have. <laughs> leave it at that. Uh, Alex says, still waiting for an Avianca refund from a canceled flight in April. File a complaint with the credit cards. So the flight was canceled in April. And you still April. haven't seen your money. Woo. Uh, Five yeah, months. so that's been May, June, June. almost. I think I would. Well, if I think I would. Um, well, how long do you have to? How long can you file a? I don't know. So dispute. I'd probably file sooner rather than later because I don't know the answer to that question, and I don't want to find out that I waited yeah. too long. So I would probably just file it. Yeah, because I, I was gonna say I would I would give them like a solid six months to return the money, but then I then I realized, well, wait a minute, that might take you outside of the time when you're yeah when you can file a dispute i just i don't know what that is yeah i don't know what that is either i i would file the dispute I, it's not fair to me that i on the one hand you don't want to jeopardize your account i guess with them have them get angry because you uh you, know, you you disputed a charge but on the flip side not right for them to hang on to your money for five no. or six months so that's a good reminder i need to look into i don't think you i've never got, got your mine. money back from oh <laughs> there you go yeah i'll have to look yeah there you go all right, and the last one. So with the changes to the, and so I'm sorry, this is from Ken, Ken217. Uh, with the changes to the Chase earnings, do you think there's any danger of the one-to-one -one Hyatt transfer rate will change in the future? Because now you can earn lots more ultimate rewards points. Do you think they'll take away one-to-one -one transfers? No way. Not that's, at all. That's totally solid. No, yeah, not on the ra radar at all. I, I tell you, if anything, Hyatt's going to have to talk with Chase about offering some bonus categories on the world of Hyatt card in order to encourage people to even want that card versus just getting the ultimate right. rewards cards. Right. But there's also, there's so many of us who uh, see Hyatt as the one and only like really good, valuable transfer partner that Chase has left. So uh, yeah, I think Chase knows that. <laughs> I don't think yeah. they, they'd want to do anything to jeopardize that. Done. All right. Well, that brings us to the end for this week. So we look forward to seeing you guys again in a couple of weeks. We'll be back with us two weeks from now. Thank you guys for being out there with us today. Always fun to be here. Sorry for my my uh, strange surroundings today. No, but... I kind of I kind of like the car look. That's, <laughs> that's good. I think you should be in a different type of vehicle or room each <laughs> each time. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do <laughs> to be able to shake things up a little bit over the next month. Here. All right. Cool. <laughs> All right. Good seeing everybody. Take care. Till ne next time. Bye bye.
and where do I turn 